I am ready to continue. The day is still young, Igor. What's our next move, boss? Are we doing something or not? What's the skinny partner? Let's make it happen.
Everyone, it's time to hit the power plant. We all know it's not going to be easy. We tried before, and not everyone made it. But this time we're smarter and better prepared. I know we can do this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can find T'Chana and end NAR. Mercy. You're talking about striking at the heart of the Rat King. But have you learned everything possible about his plans? I have evidence that NAR was conducting Chernobylite experiments back in the 90s. T'Chana and her baby were two of their subjects. With the rate at which their technology is progressing, soon nothing will be able to stop them. We must act now. What about that black mask-wearing motherfucker? Have you identified him? His name is Boris Glukov. He, Tashana, and I were close friends until he betrayed us. He helped the KGB gather evidence against Tatyana, then continued to work for NAR after my accident. He experimented on himself with Chernobylite and ended up with great power. He's strong, one of the strongest, but we can beat him together. Do you know what NAR is actually doing at the power plant? Why is it so important? And what does it have to do with Tatiana? Unfortunately, I couldn't uncover all the details. But we know enough. We stick together, follow the plan, and everything will sort itself out in the end. I'm sure of it. I like the pep talk, Professor. I think you even gave me a bit of a job. But do we have the right tools for the job? Yes, we do. We've got everything we need to infiltrate the power plant. This is much bigger than anything any of us has done before. If you want to back out, this is your chance. You know how I feel. The Red King must be stopped at all costs, Mousy. I'm in. I started out doing this for a paycheck. But I'm going to end it for my brother in arms. For Anton. Let's do this. This is bullshit. You're asking us to walk blindly into something that could very well be a trap. Oh, why didn't you prepare better? Oh, you think I'm gonna back out now and miss the best part? Fuck no. I'm with you, Igor. It's your choice if you don't want to help. I can't force you. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. We can use this to our advantage. We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties. Ask anyone. All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. Let's talk about our roles again. I want to make sure everyone's playing to their strengths. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. We can use this to our advantage. 
We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties. Ask anyone! All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. Thinking it over a bit more, I don't think we need a sniper or operations person. If we stick to the plan, everything should go smoothly. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. This is it, my love. The last stretch. You've been through so much for me. Make sure you're ready, because it will take everything you have. Your wits, your strength, your plan, your companion's loyalty, everything. Good luck, my love. This is it. Today's the day. Whatever happens. Everything sorted, guys? Can we start our prisoner escort off? I'm ready. Though my hand still hurts like hell. If the uniform doesn't get us in, we have one more ace up our sleeve. Their friend enemy password. They say... We quell the storm, and we reply, and ride the thunder. Remember it. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. How's my techie? Have you logged into their system? I'm in, Mousy. What do you need me to do? Overload their systems, bypass security? You ask, and I'll do it. But don't be rash. Once we get started, it's only a matter of time before they kick me out again. Spy check. How are my eyes and ears? Eyes are bright and my ears are wide open. I got the plans and codes up and I can hear those boring fuckers chatter like they were sitting in my lap. No worries, Igor. With me on your side, this'll be like walking to the grocery store. There are a few sentries outside the gate. That's obstacle number one. Better use the side passage for now. You can always kill them on your way out. <laughs> Don't forget that you're a prisoner, Igor. Downcast, hopeless. Use this to our advantage. Okay, showtime. This better work.
So far, so good. But it's getting harder now. NAR's upgraded some of the old security features. Security checkpoint. What used to be a radiation detector is now a biometric scanner. Clever. I already found the right database. I'll upload your biometric data and you can walk right through. Those NAR security systems can be broken by someone with enough know-how. Those IT wankers probably spent their upgrade budget on porn hub premium content. Once those gates read my biometrics, my cover will be blown. We need to convince them somehow that we're friendlies. Tarakan, I like your thinking. One moment. Yes, done and done. Those gates won't be a problem, Mousy. Time to move. With a little luck, they won't notice us. should be very close. It's a large metal door to the tech access corridor. Nothing I can't handle. Keep your hand down, Igor. There's a fucking sniper on the building above you. Stop yelling. How do you know? Picked it up on the radio. They haven't made you yet, but if you trigger the alarm, they'll come down on you like a swarm of Katyushas. Damn! If I force the lock, it'll trigger the alarm. This will be tough. I can try to remotely unlock the door without tripping the alarm, but no guarantees. You'll have to move very quickly, Mousy. The lock is wired to the alarm system, but Thatchko's charges will destroy both the lock and the trigger mechanism. I should be fine. Charge is armed. Stay back. We made it inside. We're safe, at least for now. These tunnels just about make a beeline to the reactor. From there, the way to the Ark should be easy. What the fuck? The electronics are sizzling as if they're going to explode. That's to be expected, Mousy. The power plant's electrical system is antiquated, falling apart. We should find a way to short-circuit the power. I have access to the circuit board. Perhaps I can cut power to the nearest corridor. Have you been listening, Mousy? I can turn off the entire sector remotely, no problem. I'll only leave the light on at your location. Tarakan. I like your thinking. Today, the darkness is our friend, Mousy. You're completely now safe.
We're getting close to the reactor floor. I think we managed to dodge the main security detail. As long as we maintain our cover, we should be good. Step very fucking lightly now, Igor. The place is swarming with those cocksuckers. NAR has beefed up security around Ark for some reason. Either they're preparing for something, or you're walking straight into a goddamn trap. I'm in the Golden Corridor. It looks like NAR beefed up security after our little escapade. Not unexpected. We have to convince NAR that we're their contractors. That's our ticket inside. Let's try the prisoner escort charade. Just act bored. Stop right there. I don't recognize you, soldier. We quell the storm? And ride the thunder. Prisoner transport in progress, Private. Okay, go ahead. We need to get past these scientists. The Brainiacs have their own dedicated comms. I could put my fabulous acting skills to work and tell them to fuck off, but it's a two-man job. The Great Rest Catcher has smiled upon you today. I can help. They're not soldiers. They won't buy our fairy tale. If we don't come up with something convincing, they'll sound the alarm the moment they see us. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Sounds good, Mercy. It shouldn't take long to hack the comms. Attention! Nemanja! Achtung! The reactor's about to explode! Run for your lives, everyone! What kind of nonsense is this? The reactor cannot ex- Fuck it, Anatoly. A break is a break. These old ventilation ducts will take me straight to the Ark. What the hell is this? Was it here before? Looks like some sci-fi fucking movie prop. The door is trapped. Touch it, and I'll spend my last moments on Earth convulsing on the dirty floor. This door wasn't supposed to be here. Mousy, the ventilation duct should not be secured. The Red King is watching and waiting. I can feel it. Wait, Igor! Remember the map you borrowed from that fucker Semenov? It shows another way in. Guess it was worth it in the end, huh? Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. Do it. The doors are behind you, Igor. Cut through the crap on the other side, and you'll find a nice, fat ventilation duct. Climb up in there, and it'll take you straight to the Ark.
Oh, hello, Igor. I've been expecting you. Semenov? You said you didn't want any part of this. Explain yourself. <laughs> you are remarkable, my boy. Yes, ask your questions, please. I have to say, you earned that right through your hard work and persistence. Tanya, where is she? You've always known where she is. She's here. Alas, that is the wrong question. What, what do you mean? You should be asking, what is she? If you hurt her in any way... Stop, please. Stop playing the role of a naive, lovesick puppy dog. After everything you've seen, everything you've learned, you embarrass yourself with your petty personal concerns. I'll spell it out for you. If you haven't the stomach to see it for yourself, Tatiana is a crucial part of our Chernobylite experiment. She always has been. There were other candidates, but fate decided for us. It was always going to be her. We're going to use Tatiana to create a stable wormhole to the Chernobylite world. She will travel there and help us reach its source. With her help, I will usher in a new era of human civilization. This is madness. I should have killed you the first time I saw you. My god, is this display of moral outrage supposed to impress me? You must put your maudlin sentiments aside, Igor. The world cares nothing for such things. The only real force in this life is change and growth, evolution, exploration, the act of discovery. Everything else is a substitute. An excuse meant to justify a meaningless, pathetic existence. Not for me, my boy. And you. You are my biggest regret. Did you know that? I made a mistake letting you go. You were supposed to be special. So very fucking special. That brain, those talents, all that glorious potential has been wasted on empty, sentimental pursuits. I failed you, yes. Please don't argue with me. And for that, I sincerely apologize. I'm going to save Tatiana. Stay out of my way and I won't kill you. For now. Unfortunately, no. I cannot allow you to meddle in my affairs anymore. Goodbye, my boy. What's wrong with you, Igor? How foolish can you be? How did you not see this coming? Your companion's fate has been sealed in this timeline. The least you can do is consider what led to this. Olivier! No! Olivier! Oh, damn it! The rescue! We'll have to fight our way out. These guys are the last thing standing between me and Tatiana. I can't back down now. I'll fight my way in if I have to. Oh no, this sucks big time balls. 
I wish we had someone inside who could get those assholes to look the other way. There's no other choice. Tango spotted! Engage your will! Jonah. Finally. Ready up. Igor, my love. My child. It's been so very long. But it's finally you. It has to be you. You know it in your heart, my love. I've been calling out to you for all these years, and you answered. But how? You shouldn't be here. It's a mistake. You'll only bring great misery on us all. My poor little boy. All of us together, finally. Release me, my love. Free me. What did you call me? I don't understand. What can I do? There's nothing you can do. You have to end this. Both of us. We were a mistake. An abomination. Close the portal. Destroy the connection. W what connection? The connection is the strongest force in the universe. It cannot be destroyed. It has to be completed. It is our destiny. Go to the reactor. Find it, my love. It is waiting for you. Find what? No more waiting. Please, can't you just let me die? I can't take any more. Tanya? Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Tatiana, are you still there? Boris, help! Die! Igor! I don't understand. Oh, fuck! Reactor, Chernobylite. Well, what do I do? Oh, fuck, I need to figure this out!
took your time, Igor. Cut the crap. It's time you gave me some answers. Yes, we'll get to that. But since this is our last meeting, I want to ask you a question first. Fine. Just make it quick. What do you really hope to achieve, Igor? Chernobylite is the cause of all this. I have to destroy it once and for all. You may find this surprising, but our goals are actually aligned. How's that? We were both going after the same thing. But this whole time, we've been chasing someone else's agenda without knowing it. Chernobylite's agenda. Come on, man. I've come too far to be fed a line of bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. Do you know who I am? I sure do, Boris. You were my closest friend until you decided to betray me. To take Tachana from me. Boris is dead. I killed him on that fateful night, April 26th, 1986, and took his identity. Good riddance. He was a treacherous piece of shit. You took it? Why? The more important question, the question you somehow failed to ask yourself all this time is, who are you? Because you're not Professor Igor Kimenyuk. You never were. I am Igor Kimenyuk. I only changed my name to protect you and your mother. Protect me? How? By trying to kill me at every turn? If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it the first time we met at the power plant. Will you quit talking in fucking riddles? The truth is hard to swallow, I know. It was hard for me, too. You are me. The Chana isn't your fiance. She's mine. Everything you know about her, everything you remember, none of it is yours. You're living someone else's life. My life. You are my clone, sort of. You've got my body, my brain, my skills, and most importantly, my memories from before the Chernobyl disaster. What do you say? How is that even possible? Tatiana was sterile. That was our personal tragedy. But when Semenov imprisoned her after the Duga fiasco, she fell pregnant. At first, I thought Boris was the father, and I was angry with her. But that was another of Semenov's lies. He needed me to stay on the project and study Chernobylite, so he injected Tanya with the nano solution. What happened next was, I don't know what to call it, an immaculate conception. She gave birth to a boy, you. You grew much more quickly than other kids. But your mind didn't seem to follow. It was different, somehow. The Chernobylite no doubt affected you in unpredictable ways. I never really considered you my son. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what to do with you. But it was obvious that Semenov would incorporate you into his experiments. Or maybe catch you open and rummage around inside. Until one night, Tanya, your mother, communicated with me telepathically. Even though her body was in a coma, she pleaded with me to release you into the woods. And that's what I did. You're saying Tatiana's child, who you released in the woods in 1990? But that's impossible. Impossible! I don't remember any of this! Of course you don't. You looked like a teenager, but had the mind of a small child. I remember giving you a sweater that Tatiana knitted for me. The night was so cold. It had my name on it. The sweater? I had it in the camp. I was imprisoned and... Yes, it could have been a trigger. Your mind somehow began to rebuild itself. Why in my image? I can only guess. Perhaps you were constructed from Tatiana's desires, from her expectations of a child. Funny how I called it pseudoscience. I suspect the process was somehow facilitated by the Chernobylite. But she's been calling me this whole time. She wanted me here. I'm afraid you were bamboozled, my poor boy. We all were. It wasn't Tanya who called you here, but it. Chernobylite? But the images, the voices. They felt so real, I know. Your mother was your biggest weakness. 
and the entity exploited that. It wanted you here. It has plans for you, you see. And I cannot allow it to succeed. Someone sent me a photo of Tatjana and the piece of Chernobylite. Those weren't hallucinations. They were real. I couldn't have constructed my portal gun without them. Oh, that. It was that bastard Semenov, of course. He wanted to bring you here as well. He never got over it when you vanished. Not that it matters now. I really hoped you would stay away. But it's too late now. I can't allow you to interact with the Entity in any way. Only one of us is leaving this room alive. Wait. Can't we talk it over? We just did. Goodbye, son. Igor. I wish there was another way. Let you hurt her. Gives me no pleasure, but it has to be done. <sighs> 
wish there was another way. Same for you.
get a new and improved eagle killing it. Ah! field to defeat you. What? You... You should be dead. Yeah, I've been getting that a lot lately. Look familiar? Where did you get that from? Where else? I took it from you. From your cold, dead hands, Igor. I... What? Where? When? In a reality where you fucked up, my friend. From one of the many worlds bearing the brunt of your failures. Are you saying that you come from a different... That you're from... <sighs> this is hell. You have no idea. Where are you going? Back to my screwed up world, of course. You know me. I'd prefer to die fighting. Wait! Don't waste the chance I've given you, Igor. Finish the job. This one from my son. Close the portal. Cut the connection. Deny this thing away into our world. Do it now! Son, please. It will kill her. It will kill the love of my life. Of our life. Please, there's another way. Just let me go. I've suffered long enough. You can do this, son. You can be the man I could not. Be the better version of me. Go through the portal and face this thing. Undo the harm we both caused Tanya. No, do not do this. Kill me. Just kill me, please. Finish it. It's time to end this once and for all. If anyone can hear me, run as far from here as you can. Everyone, run like hell.
Thank you for showing me the way. I won't waste this, I promise. Goodbye. You can rest now. The protagonist never explained to his comrades exactly what happened at the power plant, but he came out changed. The Chernobylite vanished entirely. The zone is now free of it. Igor Stalkers drove off the remaining NAR troops and even convinced a few of them to join the cause. Now they're working together for the good of the sandwich shells, tracking down the few remaining monsters still roaming the area. Olivier never had the chance to change his own past and prevent the ambush that wiped out his team. His obsession almost steered him down the dark path of treachery, but in the end, he redeemed himself by helping Igor with his mission. Even though it cost him his life, because he had been a part of something bigger than himself, he was at peace in his final moments. In spite of his flaws, Olivier will always be remembered in the zone for his courage and grit. For this haunted place will always be a monument to broken heroes with a twisted past. Mikhail's life was always full of violence. He was the angriest, most obnoxious man Igor had ever known, but he was also unfailingly honest, both with himself and others. Mikhail's thirst to avenge his murdered friends was his main driving force. But working with Igor and the others eventually made him appreciate the kinder aspects of life. In spite of his rough manner and the darkness inside him, Igor came to like the neurotic stalker and by the end considered him a true colleague. Mikhail decided to remain in the zone and join the others in protecting their shared home. Tarakan's fight against the Rat King has reached an end. Having barely survived the zone, he realized his time was up. Now, someone else must carry the torch and defeat the evil lurking in the power plant. But Tarakan wasn't worried. After all, he had prepared Igor and others well. Tarakan's true identity was never discovered. Was he a madman, a saint, a spy? Perhaps he was all of these, or perhaps none of them. But one thing is certain, the old man was a true child of Pripyat. His restless soul will forever wander its marshes and woods. Like so many before him, General Koslov made the wrong choices while chasing a dream of the good life. War taught him about the cruelty and inevitability of loss, leaving him indifferent to human suffering. It was only thanks to his nephew Galib and Igor that Koslov found a serendipitous moment that placed his life on a new trajectory. He realized that some victories come at too great a cost. Koslov left NAR at just the right time and lived out his days in quiet contemplation, somewhere far beyond their nefarious grasp. Semenov's ambitions and neuroses almost got him killed. He was a brilliant scientist, but could never come to terms with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though not a devout communist, Semenov could not stomach the chaotic aftermath, for it reflected the emptiness of his own heart. And so he chased his green Chernobylite dream, hoping his experiments would usher in a new world order. In reality, what he sought was to fill the gaping void in his own soul. Meeting his former student Igor saved Semenov's life, although he could never have predicted it. Confronted with mortal danger, he realized he could no longer allow his demons to determine his fate. 
He left the zone, hoping there was still time for him to find peace. Without Semenov's brilliance, NAR eventually dissolved. Most of its mercenaries wiped out by either the Shadows or the Samus Shields. Faced with staggering losses, the shareholders halted all funding. All that remains of NAR in the zone are the empty barracks and derelict labs, stark reminders of a misguided ambition based on human misery. Thank you. 